Alrighty y'all, welcome back to the shop. The holiday season is upon us and family and friends are out looking to get something nice for their own special knife maker. But what do you buy a knife maker? Now you could ask them what they want, but where's the fun in that? You want to be a surprise. So in this video, I'll provide you with a list of 10 items that the knife maker in your life will want and use. In general, I'll be sorting this list with the cheapest items first and working up in cost as we go. I also wanted to note that I'm not endorsed by any of these brands. These are just tools that I use a ton when making knives. I will be linking to all of these items in the description of this video, some of which will be affiliate links which do help out the channel if you use them. So let's get started. First up are the Cant Twist Clamps. My original main use for the Cant Twist Clamp was to hold my handle scales onto my blade in order to line up my pinholes for full 10 knives. These clamps do a great job for this operation and I'd recommend the one inch clamps if this is what you're planning on using them for. The design of these clamps allow them to be low profile and also prevents movement when applying clamping pressure. Movement that can commonly be seen with normal C clamps. Trust me, you'll find many use for these clamps in the shop and also note that they can be bought in larger sizes. Next up are 321 blocks. Like the name implies, these blocks measure three inches by two inches by one inch. They are precision ground blocks that can be used as spacers and as a handy square in a pinch. When you have these guys around your shop, you'll surely find a plethora of applications for them. I've used them for raising up my workpiece when drilling, spacing and clamping items to be welded, squaring up my work rest on the grinder, and numerous other layout orientations. For such a low price, having at least a pair or two of these around the shop is a no-brainer. Knife making is at its core a pursuit of balance, symmetry, repeatability, and precision. Without tools to measure our work, it's kind of like shooting in the dark. For this reason, a cheap set of digital calipers is a godsend. It's hard to imagine my shop without a set of these. If by chance a knife maker in your life doesn't have a set of calipers in their arsenal, then this should likely be the first thing you buy them. Laying out hole locations for drilling handles, marking bevel heights, checking bevel heights on each side of the blade for symmetry, measuring the blade and scale thicknesses, and modifying handle fasteners are just some of the tasks aided by a set of digital calipers. Not to mention they aid greatly in the production of your own tools and fixtures, which is a large part of knife making. There is not a knife that goes through my shop that I don't use my digital calipers on. I'll put a link to the ones that I use, but note that there are a huge amount of options when it comes to cheap calipers, and they're all pretty similar. The checkering file is one of the items on this list that fall into the category of luxury. By no means are these files needed for a knife maker, however, they sure are nice to have if you want to add some jimping to your spine. I like to do this on my full tang knives right in front of the handle scales where the user's thumb will land. While the checkering file is not a necessity, I know it's a hot item based on how many video comments I get asking, quote, what type of file is that and where can I get one? So because of this, it earns a spot on the list. This one is a gift not only for your favorite knife maker, but also for you. That is, unless you want to repeat yourself constantly in future conversations. You see, knife makers deal with some pretty loud equipment. Grinders, hydraulics, hammers, saws, etc. So protecting their hearing is a must. But why stop there? With a set of Bluetooth muffs, the knife maker can peacefully hand sand their blades while listening to their favorite podcast or some music. These muffs have been a game changer for me since I feel more focused and less distracted while using them. The added benefit of protecting my hearing is a nice perk that my wife will truly be grateful for a decade or two from now. Like the checkering file, I get asked about this piece of protective equipment all the time in the comment section. This respirator is designed for those of us who are genetically gifted with glorious beards. Breathing in dust from grinding will wreak havoc on your lungs, and we all want to be making knives well into retirement. The problem with many respirators on the market is that they require a pretty tight seal around the face. This is a possible solution for weaker men with smooth faces, but for the evolutionarily superior bearded men among us, Another option is needed. In steps the Respo Raider. This respirator allows a user to breathe in clear air through a mouthpiece without the need of a face seal. Ideally, the user will also use the supplied nose clamp. I will admit that it took a while to get used to this respirator. However, after I did, I found it much more comfortable than the other respirators I've tried. Note that this respirator seems to go in and out of stock depending on supply, so you may have to track it on your wish list. Next up on the list is the MAP Gas Torch. My wife actually got me this torch as a gift a while back, and I've found many uses for it. For the true beginner knife maker, this torch can be coupled with some cheap fire bricks to make a little forge for heat treating. 
but I find that it shines for other uses as well. These torches are particularly useful for drawing the hardness out of your tang before drilling, gluing back your spine, lighting the forge, or burning in your tang through epoxy on a wah handled kitchen knife. Of course that's not all, like many of these tools the application list is long and we can't cover all of it, however having the ability to directly apply heat is really nice around the workshop. Alrighty, so on the eighth item on our list here we'll be working up in the price zone. Let's talk about a good vice for the knife maker. I got turned on to pipe vices when watching Nick Wheeler and Carl Anderson. Basically with the ability to rotate, they allow the knife maker to manipulate the position of his or her knife just about any way that he or she wants to. This is obviously extremely handy when sculpting handles. I found that this vice is most useful when coupled with a knife clamp such as the one seen here in this footage. A set of soft jaws is also a really nice addition to prevent you from digging into your workpiece. A rotating pipe vise is definitely one of those tools you don't realize how nice it is to have until you use it. I've had mine for about a year now and couldn't imagine turning back. There are some tools that are easy to DIY, however, in my opinion, the file guide is not one of them. Trust me, I've tried. My homemade file guide did a great job, however, it wasn't nearly as precise and refined as the custom carbide face file guides from Brian Bump. This really is one of those tools that's worth buying quality. You'll use a file guide primarily for squaring up your shoulders for guard fitting but I've also used them for lining up plunge cuts and clamping my blade in the mill vise. Having carbide faces makes the file guide particularly useful since you can grind against them with your belt grinder. Brian generally has a wait list for these file guides, so you'll need to shoot him an email to get on it. Lastly, with number 10, I'll throw out a Hail Mary for those knife makers who really deserve something nice. Eventually, if you stick with the hobby, just about every knife maker will want some version of a 2x72 belt grinder. It's hands down the most versatile piece of equipment in a knife maker shop. They vary greatly in both price and quality. This is one of those gifts that I feel the knife maker needs to be involved with when picking out, since there are a large amount of features and personal preferences with these machines. I would advise budgeting between $1,500 and $3,700 for a good 2x72 belt grinding package. It's really hard for me to recommend a specific brand here since there are so many good brands on the market. I currently own a Northridge grinder and have been extremely impressed with its performance and quality of manufacturing. By watching other knife makers, I've heard good things about the new KMG grinders, the Ameribrades, the Evolution by House Works, the TW90s, the Black Fox grinders, Reader grinders, and Broadbeck grinders. I'm sure there are some grinders on here that I missed, but the point is that 2x72 belt grinders can be a phenomenal gift and there are a ton of options. So I hope this video gave you all some good ideas on what to get your favorite knife maker. I'll make sure to put links to the mentioned items in the description below for your convenience, and I'll timestamp this video for reference. If I missed any items that y'all think should have been on this list, please hit me up in the comment section. With that, as always, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.